Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our new educational series for student photographers. Actually, no matter how long you've been in this business, we're all student photographers. This is a career and passion where you should never stop learning. My name is Joe Brady, and as the webinar marketing manager for the Mac Group, I'm just here to get things started. I also own a photography studio, and I'm excited to be here for this look at the business side of photography. I've had a sneak peek at today's program, and if you put into practice the information you'll learn from this series, it will have a big impact on your success as a professional photographer. This webinar series is sponsored by Mac on Campus and PhotoShelter. Mac on Campus is the Mac Group's educational support program. It's our way of giving back to the photographic community. We generate educational materials and programs such as this one and make sure that the photographers of tomorrow are trained and equipped to face the challenges of this very competitive yet rewarding field. PhotoShelter is the leader in portfolio websites, photo sales, marketing and archiving tools for photographers. Our guest speaker for the series will give you some more details about PhotoShelter, so let's go ahead and introduce him. I'm pleased to introduce to you guys Grover Sanchagrin. Grover is co-founder of PhotoShelter and the creator and presenter for this webinar series. He'll tell us more about his background in a moment, but just in case I thought I'd share one tidbit. Apparently this man is passionate about tequila. To quote Grover from Grover.net, and I quote, Aside from photography, my other main interest is tequila. Not getting drunk, but tasting and enjoying really fine tequilas. The photography I do today is mainly found on my blog, tastetequila.com, end quote. So if you share Grover's passions for both photography and tequila, take a look and visit his sites listed here. It's time to turn things over to Grover, so let's give him control of the screen and get the presentation started. Hello. This on? It's working? Looks like everything's good. Okay, thank you. Um, I now have control. Uh, <laughs> Okay, now before we get too crazy, before we get started, I uh, first and foremost, I would really like to thank the Mac Group for collaborating with us on this uh, really important series for photo students. And, uh, and you know, I'm an actual user of many of their brands. You know, I use uh, stuff like X-Rite, uh, Pocket Wizard, and Pro Photo products. Um, and I've always admired uh, the Mac Group's dedication uh, to education. Uh, during the past few years, we at Photo Shelter have developed a ton of knowledge about what works and what doesn't for a growing photography business. And the Mac Group um, has been such an active, involved partner to photo education programs. It, it really made perfect sense for us to join up with them uh, for this effort. So uh, we're, we're really grateful for the opportunity and for their partnership. Now, um, today's presentation uh, on marketing is the first part of a five-part series. Um, future sessions uh, are coming soon. We'll be announcing those dates as they come. Um, now the idea for this series started as a single blog post published back in June of 2010 entitled The Top 11 Things Photographers Wish They Learned in Photo School. Now the response to that story was, was really incredible and it made us realize that there was a real need for this kind of educational resource. So during today's presentation, I will try to address all of the different aspects related to marketing photography online. Topics like uh, marketing principles, uh, the six simple elements to a successful photo website, um, the new versus old ways of doing things, uh, social media marketing tactics, and today's real opportunities in the photo world. Now. If at any point in time uh, you have any questions, you can just speak up. Uh, just use the question box found inside the webinar control panel. Uh, and Andrew Fingerman, who is our VP of Marketing, he's standing by to, uh, to answer your question. Uh, he's the guy behind the at PhotoShelter um, Twitter account. He's a very nice guy. And if you're following us uh, on Twitter, you can always ask us a question there too. Now, uh, to give you an idea of where I've been, who I am and where I've been, and what I've done uh, throughout my life thus far. Uh, I created a little bar chart of my life. Uh, so uh, the blue region here is uh, as a kid uh, growing up on Long Island, New York. I went to college at Ohio University and Rochester Institute of Technology for a brief period. And then I worked at a whole bunch of newspapers, mostly in the Midwest, um, places like Michigan. 
Uh, I left newspapers because I wanted to be part of what was the wave of the future, and I kind of considered that to be CD-ROMs. Um, obviously, you could see how long that lasted. And then uh, I made my way into the Internet, this little purple range here. And I was uh, a member of the uh, first team that uh, started the Chicago Tribune website. Um, and then I moved to San Francisco, where I joined a, a startup uh, called Quaka Sports, and we did uh, sports entertainment websites like NBCOlympics.com, Final4.net, um, Cart.com, a whole bunch of other things. And then uh, after the dot-com bubble burst, I took a couple months off and then got together with some friends. We started SportsShooter.com and PhotoShelter um, three years after that. Then, just recently, like about a year and a half ago, um, I got my own Twitter account. I've been active there. It's uh, If you want to friend me or find me or follow me, uh, that's at Hey Grover. Okay, so uh, before I get too deep into my marketing tips, I wanted to share a bit about what it is that we do here at Photo Shelter so you understand exactly where I'm coming from. So today, 65,000 photographers use Photo Shelter. Um, and a photography portfolio website is what sits at the core of what we do. But what makes us different is, we, is that we've surrounded the website with a complete set of online tools that support a growing photography business. Things like marketing tools to attract customers, sales tools to turn website visitors into customers, distribution tools so that you can use Photo Shelter as your online hub for client access, collaboration, and, you know, and things like sending images to clients online, plus a secure archive so that your images are all backed up online nice and safe. Uh, the way we see it, a website should do more, much, much more than just show your work. Um, and we're trying to, to help photographers see the business benefits of getting more out of their website with built-in tools like these. Now before we get too deep into specific photo related marketing tips, let's start off with some basic basic marketing concepts. Now there are two methods of marketing today. There's the old world and then the new world. The old world, you know, things like display ads, postcard mailings, working the phones, trade shows, you know, going showing up in at trade shows. Old world methods. New world methods, social media, SEO, blogs, word of mouth, you know, using analytics to fine tune your message. Now, the old world is like a shotgun approach. You kind of take a shotgun, it's not precise, you try to do the biggest blast, cover as much surface area as possible, and hope for the best. New world is the exact opposite. It's a targeted approach where you specifically target your intended audience and one by one pick them off um, as needed. Now, of course, we've got the old standards that straddle both worlds. That's email and word of mouth. And there are also two primary types of marketing, outbound and inbound. So with outbound, you find your customers, and with inbound, they find you. Now, outbound marketing tactics are the interruptive traditional efforts that involve pushing promotional content to your prospects, like email and promo card campaigns, cold calls for portfolio visits, trade shows, paid advertising, uh, magazines, billboards, etc., uh, and more. And inbound tactics are the exact opposite. They help you get found along the prospect's path exactly while they're searching for whatever it is that you may provide. So social media, search engines, and blogs are inbound tactics. And with inbound tactics, the end consumer has already eliminated some of the clutter that inundates people today in their daily lives. And you don't have to shout or try to interrupt them to get their attention. But because you're relevant to their needs, in some way, at that very moment, uh, you've got their attention, they're more likely to react favorably to your messages. Outbound tactics are typically considered uh, interruption methods, while inbound tactics are considered more of a solution. Any successful marketing plan has a mixture of both outbound and inbound tactics. And there's really no perfect mix. It varies for each photographer, so you should always be experimenting and, uh, and looking to find that perfect mix for you.
Now, when people think about marketing goals, they tend to think, well, the goal of marketing is to get work, or it's to sell my images, or uh, it's to make more money, duh, right? And while that's certainly the overall objective, you'll be better off if you can focus on more tactical goals, like ensuring that you're spending time and effort on the marketing activities that will actually really pay off. And to spend your time and money wisely. And to know for certain which things are working and which things aren't. Most photographers have no idea if the stuff they're doing, the stuff they're calling marketing, is actually working. They just keep doing whatever it is that they do, and they hope that somehow it's going to help their business. Now, to avoid that type of situation, let's talk about the concept of return on investment to determine if a marketing effort is worthwhile. You want to start by asking yourself, how productive is every marketing campaign I'm working on versus the amount of time and energy and money that I'm putting into it? Then remain objective as you compare uh, the degrees of success for each of the different marketing campaigns. In other words, be honest with yourself. The concept is actually <laughs> extremely simple, yet constantly overlooked. Your investment of time and money should lead to a return of more money. More money in your pocket, not less. See, I told you it was simple. <laughs> but there are a few things to consider before you can actually tell if you're getting a worthwhile return. For example, now let's take a marketing effort that's fee-based, like an email campaign. If you spend $500 getting an email campaign sent out and you end up uh, pulling in $1,200, that would be a return of investment of 140%. Sounds great, right? Okay, well, let's keep going. Now let's take a, a time-based example, uh, social media. There's really no cash outlay for social media sites like Facebook and Twitter. The investment comes in the form of the hours you spend in front of the computer uh, blasting out your messages. So let's say that you spent 18 hours doing social media stuff uh, and that resulted in $800 in cash in your pocket, or a return on a, of, uh, of investment of $44 an hour. Okay, not bad, right? Okay, let's keep going. Now let's look at opportunity costs. Understand that you have a limited time and limited resources, so this concept will help you p us pick up, pick and choose uh, which things we should really be spending our time on. So in the previous two examples, we saw a return of $44 an hour for the time-based efforts and 140% uh, for fee-based efforts. Even if those numbers sound great, if something else is doing better, you should go where uh, you're going to see the best return. So opportunity costs is the profit you lose if you choose to deploy your resources where they probably shouldn't be. So the solution is to pay attention measure at your activities, remain objective, and focus on the most productive mix of marketing activities. Let's say you've been working on your SEO, you've been active in social media, you've done an email campaign, and even run some print display ads. If you know which things bring in the best return on the investment, you can drop the things that aren't working or aren't working as well so you can spend more time and energy on the things that do. Now, in this very, very, very hypothetical case, um, email and advertising had the least attractive return on investment, so they were dropped. Okay, now let's talk about your single most important marketing tool, uh, your website. And one thing I like to remind photographers uh, is that it's not all about you. Shocker, I know. It's about your customers, and your website should be built with them in mind. Forget who your other, what your other photographer friends say, think, or do about your website. Uh, worry about what your customers think instead. Now, here's something to think about. Which part of your brain got invited to help design your website? Was it the artist, or was it the business person? 
Now the artists, they're concerned with the size of images, colors, fonts, transitions, animation, originality, emotion, mood, and the business person wants image sales, statistics, SEO, marketing and PR, return on, return on investment, bottom line, interested in the bottom line, ease of use and easy to contact. So um, from now on, from this point on in the presentation, I'm just going to assume that your photos are all outstanding, they're unique and well differentiated in some way uh, and the ones you've chosen to display on your website are well edited and pretty much perfect. Uh, that's the basic ante you need to sit at the table as a professional photographer. The rest of what I'm about to deliver is how you'll succeed in the marketplace. Now the old way of thinking is that your website is an online portfolio, basically an electronic version of a paper-based book. The new way of thinking is that your website is a business tool capable of much, much more. For example, it should help you attract new clients, it should uh, let visitors interact with your content directly, it should enable visitors to become your customers, uh, and it should help delight your customers with professional service. Now I put together a list of six elements of a successful photography website. They are. The search engines index your content, um, integrated revenue generation, measured, analyze and tweak, which means you're keeping track of the statistics and you're analyzing everything. People want to link to your website. Uh, it's living and breathing via updates. It's efficient and saves you and your customers time. And while it's doing all that stuff, it's also simple. Keeping things obvious, clear, and to the point, people should know how to use your website without any instruction. Let's start with the first point, search engines indexing your content. Now search engines are a huge, consistent traffic source. And uh, in this pie chart graphic here, uh, for example, shows that 69% of traffic to uh, my Taste Tequila blog comes from search engines. So what can we do to our websites to make search engines love us? Let's take a, uh, a before and after look at uh, photographer Brad Mangin's website. Um, this uh, it was his first ever website and uh, it was, uh, as you can tell, it had the cover page and you had to like click on the logo um, to get inside um, to the, his real front page uh, and there it was. Um, it was the the content itself was hard coded into the design with Adobe Page Mill. I mean, this is a long time ago. Um, you can see copyright 2000, and um, that made changes and updates were very very difficult for him. But he had some great ideas early on, uh, like creating a guest gallery. Um, this is a, a gallery for other photographers that he knew his friends who didn't have a website yet because he was such a trailblazer, and. Uh, this allowed him to put more content on his site, which resulted in more links to his website um, and then subsequently more traffic. Now, years later, all of these links would eventually uh, pay off really big. He just didn't realize it at the point. At that point. Um, the Sports Shooter newsletter was originally archived on his site, which later grew into a much larger standalone site at sportshooter.com. Yet more content, creating even more links to his domain. All good. And um, he uh, he wanted it easier to update. He wanted to make uh, he wanted to have a website that was easier to um, maintain and update, and not require um, having to go into HTML each time. So his next version of his website was a Flash-based portfolio site. But um, soon after he had that running, he he realized he wanted to promote his photo archive, which is quite big, um, and he wasn't able to take advantage of things like image search and integrated social media tools uh, using a flash based site. So um, he phased out the flash site and he, now he's using WordPress with a graph paper press theme. Um, most of the reason for this change was SEO related. So let's look at some of the SEO benefits he now has with this new format. 
First, uh, page titles, really important for SEO. Uh, WordPress places the title of the blog post into the page title. That's the page title up at the top. And there's the uh, headline. Um, this is a great SEO boosting tactic, and it's all done automatically by, by WordPress. Um, and remember, text is your friend, and text next to photos teaches the search engines um, what is inside of that photo. Um, Texts that are links also teach uh, search engines what's on the other side of that link. And every image on Brad's site has a caption uh, in very close proximity to the image. Uh, he also does something that's, uh, that's very smart. In this example, uh, he's teaching search engines what's deep inside of his archive by, by using text links that will execute an archive search when clicked. Uh, in this case, uh, clicking Will Clark will perform uh, a search on Brad's archive for the baseball player, uh, Will Clark. So you click that, and there's his search results. And this is an example of how Google displays a web page's meta description. A lot of people ask me, what is a meta description? Well, how should I, what should I do with that? Um, this is what Google, how Google displays this uh, in their page. So you should write this as if it were uh, an ad for that page. It's also um, another really keyword rich area. Surprisingly though, uh, most photographers leave this totally blank. But uh, WordPress automatically creates a meta description for that. So with all this work, um, and SEO um, fascination, <laughs> does it really matter? Um, will you ever really get results. Um, this is a really great uh, case study here because when Brad launched his his blog, he created a whole new domain name of mansionphotography.net. Um, it was never registered at all up until about a week before this, his site went live, so it was impossible for him to have any links uh, back. So this was going to be a good test. Um, and amazingly, uh, less than two weeks after he launched the new site, he popped up on Google um, in the, for the term baseball stock images um, in eighth and ninth position on the first page of results. Um, and then months later, he rose to five and six. And the term baseball stock photography did even better in the, in the seventh and eighth spot on, uh, on Google's first page of results. Now, this stuff really does work. A few months later, he was at three, four, and five. So very, very cool. Now, as I said before, Brad started collecting links uh, really, really early on. Um, and because he started um, doing that uh, with his guest galleries and his, and his archive of the Sports Shooter newsletter, uh, without knowing it, he got the jump on all of his competitors. Um, today, he ranks number one for the uh, very coveted sports photographer search term. Uh, this shows just how just how important it is to build your build links to your website, um, and we'll we'll talk more about the importance of um, links and link building later in the presentation. So, uh, if you really want to get into the details of SEO for photography websites, you should definitely read through our uh, SEO cookbook. It's a it's a free download from our website, and this report goes into detail about how search engines like Google work specifically when it comes to photographer websites. And uh, SEO is, is really overwhelming to a lot of people, but the general rule is that there are four major factors uh, that influence SEO. So trust and authority of the domain, link popularity of the specific page, anchor text of external links, and on-page keyword usage. These are the four most important factors. Um, now trust and authority of the domain, that means, you know, uh, are you, uh, who, who's linking to you? Like, is an important, very important uh, website linking to you? Like, if you're getting a link from apple.com to your website, that's going to be worth more than if you're getting a link from NigerianViagraScam.com. Um, <laughs> I know, I just made that up. Uh, link popularity of the specific page. So, um, how, what's the what's the page rank? How many? How popular is that particular link itself? Anchor text of the external links, which means what is the text that's inside of the link? So instead of it just saying click here, 
Um, you can actually say great photography, and that uses those words as keywords. And the on-page keyword usage, that's the actual content in the page um, itself that you have control over. Now, in the cookbook, here are a few things that are mentioned that are really helpful. Uh, first, take time to add keywords uh, to all of your images. Um, make sure keywords are displayed on your web pages. A lot of photographers will think, oh, I've got keywords. They're already in my uh, metadata. They're in my IPTC. Um, everything will be able to see. Uh, the search engines will probably just read that. Not true. Um, they have to be pulled out of there and stuck into the HTML page. Uh, add descriptions to image alt tags. Alt tags are, you know, if uh, if if the computer didn't load an image for whatever reason, um, it would actually insert this block of text in there. And this is a very good place for you to add keywords um, and descriptions for the image. And renew your domain name for multiple years at a time. Lots of people are surprised by this, but you know, Google and the search engines are trying to figure out ways to determine whether or not your website is actually valuable, trustworthy, important, or worthy of linking to or uh, including in their in their index. And uh, and one of the ways that they can tell if you're serious is if you know if your domain name is registered for the next five years, that means you're serious. If it's been registered for five years and it's got another five years to go, that's that says a lot more than if you uh, if you're if your uh, domain name expires in two weeks, and uh, you know, so um, put important keywords into the page title, as I discussed a little bit earlier. It's a great place for keywords. Uh, avoid the click here syndrome. So don't, if you're going to link to something, don't ever use click here. Um, use really good targeted uh, keywords instead. Strive to get links from influential websites. Links are great. I mean, you want them from as many places you, as you can, but if you can get them from really important uh, places, pl uh, pages that have high page ranks, um, you'll do even better. And place keywords in your URLs. Uh, I think I'm going to show an example of that um, in a few minutes. Now, if you're a Photo Shelter member, um, you could take advantage of the SEO grader. This is really cool. You just basically go and click this button, and then it'll run through your Photo Shelter account, your Photo Shelter website, archive, portfolio, and it will look through everything that you've got, and then give you a grade from like zero to 100 on how you're doing, and then give you some tips on like, okay, go here, add these captions, go here, put these keywords, you know, that kind of thing. So um, definitely run that to see where you're at. And we've seen people go from very low single digit numbers all the way up to like 99 and 100 and then um, watch them closely and it really does work so this is actually kind of really cool <coughs> um, okay so what to expect um, here's where many people get tripped up uh, they don't have any idea what to realistically expect when it comes to results from their SEO efforts uh, first the search engines will only list and rank what they think is important. Now people linking to your site and your images will make the search engines think that your stuff is important enough to include in their in their index. Um, think of it, think of each link as if it were like a vote for your site. That's kind of how they see it. And remember um, that just because the search engines might know your content is there, if nobody is linking to it, they probably won't take it seriously. So when links are added to your site, it can take several months for those benefits to show themselves in terms of better rankings. Now this is something the search engines in do intentionally to prevent link abuse. Uh, however, some tweaks you can make um, can take effect almost right away, like inserting keywords into your page title. And don't be freaked out if your ranking goes up and down, it will change constantly and it's totally normal. Okay, next. Part number two, integrated revenue generation. Um, I, I believe every website should be able to pay for itself. Um, and in addition to assignment, getting you assignment work, um, all photographers can and should be generating revenue from their website. And there are three different main revenue sources. There's prints, products, 
like you know mugs, mouse pads, and keychains, uh, and image downloads like rights managed, royalty free, and personal use downloads. Um, your website should be capable of all of these at the same time. Now here's an example. Um, Alan Greth, who's a uh, San Francisco Bay Area um, youth sports and editorial photographer. Every image on his website is available in many different ways. First here is, uh, is available as prints and as products. So we're looking like ceramic mugs, framed 8x10 prints, um, you know, mouse pads and stuff like that can fit in there. Um, also um, as available as instant downloads. There's two ways to do that. There's a personal use download and then there's the uh, rights managed download for photo quote, run by photo quote. And uh, another Another uh, revenue generating idea that almost anyone can do, um, you know, we're all familiar with the notion of making uh, cheap prints like on flat paper, made and shipped to your customers by a third party printer. Um, but if you sell that same image as a signed and numbered, matted and framed um, and do the fulfillment yourself, um, you can jack up the price. So if somebody really loves a picture, why not let them spend more for a larger, better quality version of the same image? Now, personal use, which I just mentioned a few seconds ago, uh, is gaining in popularity. It's like it's like selling a print without the print. It's a digital download, uh, just large enough in size to display on a person's cell phone, or computer desktop background, or a screensaver slideshow, or something. Um, selling images this way doesn't cost you anything because there is no print to make and no product to ship. So photographers and their customers really are moving. Um, pretty quickly into this direction. All right, next start. Three, um, measured, analyzed, and tweaked. Now, 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 don't be insane and don't go insane. So study your traffic and make little tweaks over time. Pay attention to the keywords people are already using to find you um, and the ones that they should be but aren't. Um, by using analytics and measurement, uh, you can make your site better, more effective, easier to use, uh, and more profitable. So you should take the information you get from analytics and make constant tweaks to your website, you know, constantly improving it. Developing a regular pattern where you experiment and make a change, then wait until you have enough data to show if the change was for the better or for the worse, <laughs> and, uh, and then keep, keep doing it, keep progressing. Uh, you'll get a whole lot smarter and your website will get a whole lot better in the process. Now, Google Analytics is a free resource that can tell you uh, who came to your website, where they came from, what they did, and how long they stayed, etc. Just give you this little code, this little JavaScript code, you stick it in every single page, usually like at the foot or at the bottom of the page, and, uh, and then every single page it loads, it executes this thing, sends a little thing to Google Analytics, they register it and uh, compile everything for you. Now, to really create a solid SEO strategy, we have to understand what people are actually searching for. And Google has another free tool called AdWords that shows you approximate volumes based on the keywords you type in. So for example, here on the screen, um, Chicago wedding photographer. Um, that's what we entered. And AdWords then would give you search volumes for that term and suggest related terms. So it's a great way to build an internal hit list of important keywords. Now I went ahead and did some checking on a few popular search terms just for fun and, and here's what I found. Um, the number one thing I found, food photographer 60,500 average monthly searches, fashion photographer 49,500, um, least travel photographer <laughs> 4,500. Um, so definitely get in there, explore, and and, uh, and try your specialties out, and see what's what it suggests. Um, now, in terms of measurement, I know I know you're not a scientist, and uh, you'd much rather be out taking pictures and staring at charts and graphs. Um, but but if you're serious about your business, you'll dive headfirst into this measurement aspect. Um, it, it isn't like the old days of, of print ads. You know, today everything can be measured for effectiveness and 
and you can make smarter decisions about where you spend your money and your time. So yes, you actually do really need it. Now, what does analytics and measurement actually get you? Uh, well, it'll answer some very key questions about your website um, and how people are using it. Um, why do so many people leave my site without doing what I want? Um, are there website design elements that are turning visitors away? And what site content are people most interested in? Uh, how do you know if your website is actually successful? And you can set a goal and know the behavior that you want to get from your visitors and then tweak your site to make sure you arrive at those goals. So some goals can include stuff like I want people to buy a photo or I want everybody that comes to the, the, to the website to sign up for the newsletter or maybe fill out a survey or a form or something. So you can track all that and measure the conversion rate. So if you have uh, those set goals, then you can really geek out on some, and, and, and come up with uh, your conversion rate for each goal. Now this takes the mystery out of things because you can assign a number to each goal. The higher the number, the better you're doing. Um, as you make tweaks to your website, you should be working uh, to increase your conversion rates. If the conversion rate goes up, all right, thumbs up, great. Your tweak worked, uh, keep it up. If it went down, you know, you know uh -oh, learn from it and go in another direction. So my advice, install Google Analytics and monitor what's happening on your own website. <clears throat> okay, making informed decisions is what it's all about. So if you're wondering how much traffic your site gets, or maybe where the traffic is coming from, or which sites send you the most traffic, um, you can use this information to make decisions that will improve your overall marketing plan. Also, if you're work wondering if, uh, if visitors are using the site the way you want them to, or seeing uh, the images that you want them to see, um, you can find out, and if the answer is no, then you can fix it. Other decisions, which uh, SEO keywords are performing best and have the best conversion rates? Uh, which images or galleries are the most popular. Uh, armed with this information, uh, maybe you'll decide to create more of that kind of content. And which of your marketing campaigns have the best conversion rate? Now, in addition to content-based intelligence, I think my favorite use of analytics has to do with the improvements it can bring to your website structure, like your site navigation. Uh, are people using it easily? A lot of photographers think that their website's easy to use because they understand it, but uh, it's only to come to find out that their customers don't don't understand it or don't get it or are confused. Um, and where your visitors leave your website, that's always interesting too. It's like where do they bail out? Where do they disappear? Where do they drop off? Um, and is this where you expected them to or where you planned them to? Okay, I think <laughs> I think that's about about enough of me uh, blabbing on about uh, the benefits of analytics, so let's move on. Next one. Um, people want to link to it. Um, your website should be so uh, compelling that people uh, want to share it with other people. They want to link to it. They want to they want to tweet about it. They want to put it on Facebook. They want to put it on their blog and talk about it. They want to um, link to it. So links, they're basically internet gold. Um, so you should give people an incentive to link to your to your site and to your content. And the best place to start is providing great content. So um, once you get the content, how do you start pulling in traffic? Well, let's uh, let's go and give a real a real life example and follow uh, a blog post from creation to promotion and beyond. And I'm going to use um, another example from Brad Mangin. Uh, because basically he gave me his uh, all of his username and passwords to get into his stats and stuff, so I have all of his data. <laughs> um, so he uses Twitter, Facebook, uh, a blog. He embeds slideshows into his uh, blog posts, um, and, he, and he measures everything with Google Analytics. So um, the general idea is to get as many entry points as possible. That's why he puts his content in all these different places. 
Um, because why? Because well, people are in many different places, so you got to bring your content to where they are. Um, he uh, he's also got a very convenient tweet this button at the bottom of every one of his stories, so people can spread the word um, for him. And he so he shot that. Wait, you know, actually, I should go back. This was a, a story he posted when Mark McGuire admitted steroid use. So he dug into his archive and he, and he threw together all these pictures of Mark McGuire um, throughout the years, um, when he was skinny to when he got big, and uh, and then quickly got that out there, um, you know, to 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 match the news cycle. And um, here you can see he put his uh, link to his blog post on Twitter a couple of times. He also went to Facebook and posted it there. Got a bunch of comments, and then he followed it up. He looked, you know, that very next day he went in. He was see how much traffic did I get from that story. Um, you know, it was just content he already had. He just pulled it out of his archive, threw it in a gallery, put a blog post together about it, and there you go. So you know, you keep doing that over and over again, and uh, it starts to really build up. So it's important to keep track of your results, um, as he's doing here with with his Google Analytics, and, and then make changes based on what you've learned. So um, the more links to your content, really the better. Now here's another example from Scott Thompson. He's a photographer based in Lake Tahoe. He shot photos of the recent lunar eclipse, uh, and then he quickly got them up onto his blog and into his archive. Uh, he linked to it from Twitter and Facebook, and he saw a huge spike in traffic um, and even actually sold a few of these images. Now here is his blog post with the image embedded inside. And notice how he uses the words uh, winter solstice lunar eclipse in linking to his archive, to the photos on his archive. Um, this is a smart way to include um, keywords within your own website. It's a great SEO tactic. This is like the opposite of the click here syndrome. He did it right here. This is good. Um, and here's that photo available for immediate sale within his archive. Now getting a little closer, zooming in here, um, you can see that he uh, includes easy links to social media and content sharing sites, uh, which encourage other people to pass around a link. Now, uh, as I've been not so subtly hinting at, one of the best ways to, main, uh, to get people to, uh, to link to you is to maintain a blog. So you're probably thinking, oh, great, now I have to become a blogger now. Great. Well, no. I mean... <laughs> Um, you shouldn't expect that you need to develop a huge following, a blog with a huge following, and become an, an internet sensation. Um, blogs are really all about um, the search engines, and of course, well, maybe maybe your mom too. Um, there are many benefits to having a blog. Um, the first is you have 100% control of the content. You can write about what you want to write about. You can create content that promotes your other content, um, and uh, and you don't have to, you know listen to anybody else to do it. It's all under your control. Um, it's useful for keyword association. So if you are a really great tequila photographer and you have an archive of, of photos all about tequila, you could constantly write out stories about tequila and link throughout using the word tequila to your images um, and help associate uh, valuable keywords to your content. And search engines love freshness. And, uh, and, and blogs are really super easy to update, so it's easy to produce fresh new content um, all the time. It's always a great thing to, um, to, for your website to be expanding. It's always adding new things. If it gets stale and you don't update it for a while, you'll start to see that your SEO starts to slip. Um, it gives you control of page titles, uh, descriptions, and, and URLs. Um, you can also use your blog to uh, create backlinks to your own archive, as like I showed you with, with Brad did that and Scott did that, um, creating links to your own archive, um, storefront, your portfolio, that alerts search, en search engines of your content. Um, this enables you to teach search engines what's deep inside your archive. You know, if you're a, if you're a, if you're a tequila photographer, you can't. Google's not going to just come and do a random search through your archive and type in the word tequila. You kind of have to give it some guidance 
Uh, so that's why you uh, that's why you want to um, embed these links and teach these search engines what is in your archive. And uh, blogs and HTML-based websites are proven to get more links than Flash-based websites. This is totally, totally true. Um, as because links are so important um, for for SEO, really you don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize you getting links. And it's statistically proven that Flash-based websites receive less links from people out there in the world than HTML websites. Blogs get the most links because they're easier to link to. There's a direct link to it. Um, everything's all on one page. It's it's like uh, it's it, it, people are more comfortable linking to HTML based websites than they are to Flash. Okay, so what what do you what should you expect with blogging? Well, um, and this is totally realistic stuff here. Um, you should expect a slow build towards strong search engine results. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, you really need to be dedicated and you need to have patience and you need to just you know not give up and continuously do it um, at a steady clip and you'll and you'll see uh, slowly start seeing results. Um, you should expect to see an, an increased online footprint, which means you'll have more content out there. There'll be more more of your things in the search engines um, indexes over time, which is a good thing. Um, greater social sharing of your content. Again, because it's a blog and hopefully it's interesting and it's HTML and it's it's uh, it, it's going to be more easily shared um, among among the social sphere. And um, it gives you another touch point to have dialogue with your audience. So blogs generally have uh, common areas and you can really interact with um, with your with your public. Also, it gives you a pedestal to show off your street cred and thought leadership. Um, if you're interested in really um, dominating or, or, or really just kind of uh, asserting yourself in a specialty and or, in, or some kind of a niche, that's uh, that's a great way to do it. And um, it helps you increase followers on social media sites. And uh, gives you the ability to tell the story behind your pictures. Um, and demonstrate your professionalism. So you could write about, like, hey, hey, this is how I did this particular assignment. These were the challenges. This is what I came up with. Um, here's some outtakes, whatever. Um, it actually tells prospective uh, employers how, how do you think through a process? How do you solve problems? Um, how, do you, how do you arrive at what you arrive at? It, makes, it gives them a better feeling for what they could expect should they were to hire you. And uh, it gives the opportunity for people for there to be more links to your website or your domain. Um, what are the, some of the best practices for blogging? Uh, well, I made a quick list of the things I think will make the biggest impact. First of all, it's totally okay to promote um, your business. Um, that's the purpose, and that's what people have come to expect. Uh, promote your business in a way that's also educational and then you'll be totally fine. Um, utilize SEO to help search engines find you. Um, remember, blogging is all about SEO. So keep that in mind with every blog post you write, every headline, every link that you put in there. It's all about um, uh, coaching the search engines into, um, into finding the things that you want them to find. Um, demonstrate that you're a thought leader. Um, you know. Don't just uh, don't just be a robot that follows the pack. Um, you know, do something that really shows your, your uh, original, unique. Um, you have a brain. You're you're uh, you're going for it. <laughs> um, demonstrate how you work. Like I mentioned before, really show people how it is, uh, what you do, and how you do what you do. Now, your tone, writing style, and sense of humor will indicate the, to the client. Um, how you'll get along. Now, this is really important, um, and then we'll talk about this later, actually, too, about the, the concept of likability and how it's important for your for your clients to get the perception of like, you know what, this 
this person would be enjoyable to work with. I, I would like this person. Um, and your personality really does come through in your writing, st in your writing style, um, and especially if you have a sense of humor. Um, it's important. And uh, create and maintain a, a dialogue with your audience. So don't just uh, put up a post and then walk away. Be in your comments um, chatting with folks, too. Now, um, there are many, many blogging tools to use, some free, some paid, some old, some new. But um, I'm only really going to spend time talking about uh, one for the sake of this presentation, and that's WordPress. And the reason is that tons and tons of people are using it. I took this little screen grab off of their website just yesterday. Um, and you can see how many people downloaded this little, their most recent uh, version. So there's a giant, giant community, um, open source community supporting it. And that translates to, in support that comes like in the form of plugins. Uh, plugins are really cool because you can ex extend the functionality of your blog. Um, and there's so many plugins and they do so many cool things. Um, these are four, four of my favorites right here. Um, Google XML sitemaps. This is really cool because it'll automatically create an, uh, a sitemap specifically for Google that, um, that Google totally loves. So it'll tell Google where all of your um, content resides and tell it when, when the last things were updated. So they only need to go to one place and they can get everything. So that's totally cool. And then there's um, Sexy Bookmarks. Probably has my most favorite name of a plugin. But uh, this gives you links to all the major social media networks um, and that'll sit at the bottom of your uh, of each of your blog posts. So it's really easy to, to put all these uh, links to the social media networks and, and content sharing sites. And then, uh, then there's WordPress database backup. This is super, super cool. Um, should anything ever happen to, to your WordPress database, um, I mean, that's like, that's like the lifeblood, the central core of everything that you're doing. Everything is contained in there. Um, I have mine on the Taste Tequila site. I have mine set up to every three days, I think it's every three days, two days, it automatically emails me a compressed version of the uh, of the database. So if I ever needed to go back, like, oh, I need to go back two weeks ago or something, I could actually even do that too. And then um, Ask His Met is uh, is is my buddy because it helps it helps kill a lot of the spam, the comment spam that comes in. So if, if you're running a blog now, you you already know um, you get these robots that come trolling through, and then they put they, they put links and spam inside of your comments area, and uh, and it can be a real pain to, to kind of like keep on top of it. But but uh, this this uh, this, pl this uh, plugin uh, really help, makes it a lot easier. Okay, next one. Living and breathing via updates. You know, if your site is easy to update, you'll be more likely to update it. So regular updates helps CEO SEO. <laughs> And it gives people a reason to talk about you. So here's an example. Um, Jack Gruber's old, old website. I actually built this for him in like, what, 95? Yeah. And, uh, but the problem with it was it was all in HTML and it had frames and it was a real major pain to, up, uh, to update. So we never did. It was just like, oh, yeah, I shot this great assignment would be great to go on my website, but man, it's going to take me all day, and then I'm going to screw something up, and then I'm going to have to call Grover. So, um, not good. Content was totally mixed in with the code, a total mess. So, he switched away from that, and he went, he switched to uh, to a WordPress-powered uh, blog using a graph paper press theme, as you can see here. So, that's the before and after. And now, he updates all the time. So he does an assignment. And this is his content index on his blog. Um, and you can see there's plenty of stories and things that he's doing now. Um, and this is really, really helping him um, uh, develop his portfolio and show his style and, and everything. So and here's a closer view of one of his posts. Now, 
by the way, and I was I mentioned this earlier, so um, Jack has a really nice uh, set of clean URLs, um, and the search engines see the words within these URLs um, as keywords. So here he's got Invasion Iraq 2003. Those are fantastic keywords. Um, so his blogging system uh, automatically places these words in the headline, um, from the headline, uh, into the post of the URL. Uh, and another thing that photo editors told us that drives them nuts is the lack of contact information um, or websites that make it hard to find contact info. Jack places this information uh, at the bottom of every single page of his site. And finally, it should be efficient and save you and your customers time. So um, I'm really into the whole uh, central hub concept for, for photographer websites. I think a website should be the center of everything, uh, and customers are, growingly, are, are growing increasingly savvy to this type of uh, structure. Um, all types of businesses are using this, you know, airlines, shopping, even you know, iTunes. They act as a central hub. They're available online any time of day or night. So they're always open ready and efficient. And, and I really do think that your clients are, are expecting this nowadays. So um, in, a, in our survey of professional photo buyers, 82% of them said that they wanted the ability to download images directly from a photographer's website instead of having to wait for the photographer to get around to sending them the images. So making it easier to get images from your archive can very well increase your income, and, and here's how. Uh, when a photographer uploads images to their website or their archive, uh, they are available to your clients theoretically. They're there, so they're available anytime, day or night. But most photographers have two types of customers. They've got their regular clients, and then they've got trusted clients. And trusted clients are like people who you know and trust and you've worked with for, for a while. Now, by giving your trusted clients access to your archive where they can just go in there and grab any photo, um, they can they can go grab whatever they want and and not bother you, right? Now, regular customers, on the other hand, they can be forced to uh, pay for an image before they downloaded it, and um, and once they pay, they get the green light, uh, they can download the images. And so you would follow up uh, with your trusted clients later on and send them an invoice. Now, I know several photographers who have. Um, turned on their trusted client um, access to certain people and because of that they've made more sales they've uh, had more photos used and published um, totally works uh, another great workflow benefit when it comes to image distribution is the ability to export images out of your website um, or archive directly uh, to a clients FTP server and then um, and that way you're not using your, you know, it's not like a laptop in a Starbucks desperately trying to get your images uh, to a client. You're actually um, using, you know, like photo shelters, um, servers and bandwidth and stuff like that. Super simple. And then you'd follow up later on with uh, the payment, get a pile of cash. Just once in my life, I want a bag of money like that that's not on my computer. It's for real. Um, worry more about how your website works than how it looks, and think of your website as a business and marketing tool instead of an online portfolio. So this is part of the new way business tool concept. Uh, and here's a lesson I learned the hard way. Keep data separate from the design. And let me explain why that's important. The old way mixed content with, uh, with the code in the site. And the new way keeps content in a database so that the design can change and grow. So let's talk about a little bit more about um, old way and new way by looking at some more examples. Um, here's a before and, uh, before and after example. This is Amy Vitale. Uh, her website is like one of the first ever flash-based websites. Um, and uh, it's the first one I've ever seen. Uh, but it, it was totally invisible uh, to search engines. So. Um, she got rid of that, and then she went with a uh, WordPress blog style. As you can see, lots of more text, bigger images, easier to update, 
and, and this is working really, really well for her. Uh, David Keyes, uh, a family and child portrait photographer. Um, this is his old style uh, splash page where you had to click to get inside. Um, here's an inside page. This is entirely built in flash. Sure, it looks, you know, it looks pretty good, but Google can't see it. There's actually no shadow sight, nothing. Um, he had a slideshow tool in there, once again, um, invisible to the search engines. Here's a contact page built entirely in Flash, invisible to search engines, and visible to people that didn't have uh, Flash plugins. Um, here's an ordering page, which is a very clunky experience for our customers, all awkwardly hacked together in Flash. So he recently got rid of the old and replaced it with the new, uh, a WordPress theme from GPP. Are you noticing a theme yet? Um, here's a close-up view of the new site. Pretty cool. So um, the new way of business tool thinking, um, type of changes that went into, uh, went into this were um, that it was 100% HTML and no flash, switch to WordPress, um, the ability to write Given the ability to write blog posts, dynamic content sitemap was able to be produced, keyword rich URLs all over the place, ability for image search, um, e commerce was uh, integrated, photo shelter got integrated, Google Analytics was added, data got separated from the design, hallelujah, image watermarking um, as needed, uh, portfolio slideshow uh, mechanism in integrated. Um, he created his own hit list of keywords, and the captions and keywords have been included throughout. I'm trying to hurry up because I think we might be running late. Um, now, about social media, questions that everybody asks. First, you know, should I be using social media for my business? Should I be on Facebook or Twitter or both? Um, you know, at the very bottom line, is this worth my time? Um, these are questions people ask all the time and so, um, and since um, it's such a great way to market your images I'm hoping that by the end of this presentation you'll have all these questions fully answered. Uh, social media, why it's important? Well it generates website traffic for sure. Um, it's one of the, the uh, one of photo shelters, the photo shelter blog, it's one of the leading um, generators of traffic every day. Um, creates conversion, uh, engages the audience, and it, it gives them a way to not just, I mean, you can, you can interact with the audience, and that's something that's really um, effective. Um, it can help you increase sales and profits, and uh, it helps you promote recurring business, and definitely improves SEO. Now, you've noticed, we've noticed that there are about five primary reasons why a person would use social media first. There are the people who primarily use it for business reasons, uh, um, personal reasons, I'm sorry, and not for business. And then second, there are people who use it mostly for business and establishing business contacts. Third are the people looking for special deals and prizes or to get into heated debates with others. Uh, fourth, uh, these are the people who want to keep tabs on celebrities, maybe famous people or respected people in their industry who they admire. And finally, we have the blowhards, <laughs> and these are these are people are everywhere in life. They talk about themselves the whole time to anyone who will listen. Um, there are a healthy amount of these people using social media, but don't let them scare you away. But really, there are just two types of people, if you ask me, um, who use social media: those who are busy um, expanding their business, um, and those who don't. Um, those who get it. Basically, that's what there is. Those who get it uh, and they're busy expanding their business, and those who don't, who are busy usually talking about how they don't have any interest in social media because they don't want to tell the world what they're having for breakfast. And you know what? <laughs> there are a ton of social media networks out there. I mean, these are all the major ones, but then I also found 182 others. So, you know, you have your choice. Um, and for those of you who don't know how Twitter works, I'll, here's where I explain the concept. And for those of you who already get it, sorry, bear with me for a moment, please. Um, if you're all freaked out 
with the notion of t Facebook and Twitter, like don't really don't worry. It's just a modern day version of word of mouth advertising, and it's the oldest and probably best marketing tactic in the world. But for those of you who don't already know, here's the basics. Um, let's say you have three friends, and you had something to say. You said it to those three friends. Some of those friends decided to pass that along to their friends, and so the it went from contacting three people with your tweet to now reaching 12. And then the process continues. Certain people there, and then you reach 26. And soon, next thing you know, you are theoretically have reached 50 people. So it's a very easy way to, um, and a cost-effective way to get a message out. Uh, now, if you have enough interesting things to say, uh, the more people will start to follow you the next time you send a message. Um, it'll go directly to those people because they'll be following you directly. And then the process repeats. So Twitter, some best practices. Uh, one out of every 10 posts should be used for self-promotion. Don't be like, me, 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 all the time. Um, you know, tweet about other people. Um, share the love. Uh, become a valuable member of the community by being helpful to others. Uh, become an information resource. Contribute to conversation and debate. Promote others frequently because in turn, they'll promote you. Uh, the best time to tweet, we found to be around 12 noon Eastern time. That gives you um, people in the East Coast having lunch and the people just getting to work on the West Coast and then everybody in between. Follow friends and relatives, business partners, publications and media outlets, and people in the public eye. Uh, tweet and retweet with regularity. Attribute everything. So if you get a cool quote or you see something, a cool tip, or always always pass along like, hey, I got this from so-and-so. I mean, it's always noticed and appreciated. Use strategic keywords. So remember your keyword strategy. This applies to Twitter too. So if you have keywords you're looking to master, use those keywords in your tweets. Uh, follow your followers. If someone's following you, consider following them back. Uh, be consistent. Be consistent in the, uh, the the tone and and the topics that you talk tweet about, and the timing and and regularity of of what you're doing. And always remember that you're representing your brand. And we'll talk a little bit more at the very end about what I mean by uh, your brand. Quickly about Facebook. Um, there's more than 500 people now using Facebook. Um, if you can believe it, people spend over 700 billion minutes per month on Facebook. It's insane. Um, here's some best practices there. Um, engage with your fans. Don't, you know, don't, don't just be like a, you know, you make it a two-way communication. It's always best to do that. Um, post updates frequently. Optimize your page for SEO. So SEO that on your website, all those things you know about your website for SEO, also applies to um, your Facebook page. Um, remember, keywords all over the place. Links are good. Um, show your human side. Don't be a machine. And uh, don't only promote your business. Promote others. Promote other concepts. Promote other other, other uh, initiatives, agendas, concepts, ideas, photos, whatever. Share and promote um, other things that people are doing too. Um, what do you expect? Well, it takes time to build a following, so don't expect to immediately race to the top with a million followers. Um, and, and don't worry yourself too much with this. It's not a popularity contest, really. Um, um, you'll get more followers if you are positive rather than negative. So if you're like, this sucks, and I don't like that, and how come this, and I hate this company. And if you do, if you do uh, mostly negative posting, you'll get less followers. Positivity is, uh, is what people are really interested in. In Facebook. Um, people within your network will come and go, and this is normal. Don't be freaked out if somebody stops following you. Um, many people uh, will prefer to interact with you primarily via social networks. I have people who uh, only email me now through Facebook. It's like, oh, are you kidding? I'm, you, know, <laughs> you know, and that's not, that doesn't match up with what I do, but, but, but that's what uh, some of these clients do, so you kind of have to be there. Now here's a couple of workflow examples um, 
Todd O'Young is a uh, he's a photographer in St. Louis, Missouri, and he, his target. On social media target are music fans and other photographers. So what he does is he shoots an assignment, then he blogs about that assignment, and then he posts images to Flickr, and then he tweets. Um, he sends a he tweets about the blog post that he's written about it. He says social media is an organic, fresh way of presenting work. Okay, let's look at another one. Kendrick Brinson, she runs the social media, um, she's a photographer and also runs the social media um, um, jobs for Luceo Images, a collective of photographers. And there's six photographers in that collective. Um, and their target is photo industry peers and people like editors who hire them. So their process um, is between one and four blog posts every day. They stagger them between 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern time. Then they post links on the Luceo Facebook fan page. They make sure to tag everybody that's involved. Then they tweet about the blog post. And then they'll retweet it from different accounts. So um, there's different followers uh, on different accounts. And they make sure that they, they get all the, uh, all the accounts going. She says, uh, we're interested in having a dialogue with people who follow our work. So. Next, another example. Craig Holmes. He runs a, a stock uh, um, stock site called the Images of Birmingham. It's all about um, uh, images of Birmingham, UK. Um, he only does Twitter. He doesn't use Facebook. He's tried it, and he said it didn't really work for him. Um, but what he does is he creates a photo of the day blog post that he'll tweet that post with a link to his archive, and then he makes sure to pay attention to who's retweeting his tweets, and then he'll go about by following them. Um, he says, to a certain extent, we rely on others retweeting our messages. And finally, last example here, um, Andrea Wilson. Um, and uh, her target is uh, the motorcycle industry and its enthusiasts, because she's a motorcycle uh, photographer. Um, she spends about one hour a day on social media. She posts to several different networks. Um, she also creates a photo of the day uh, blog post. And, uh, and she seeks to engage in two-way conversation with her followers. So she'll actively engage um, with people as they comment on her work. Um, she says, I focus more on social and less on sales pitch. And then that works actually really well for her, that approach. So let's talk about some opportunities for today. Um, specifically, how do you differentiate yourself from your competition? Um, first is, don't be the same as everybody else. Show your own style and vision uh, and make this your competitive advantage. Uh, show that you're a likable person. And I can't tell you how many editors and art directors have said things like, hey, is this someone I'm going to want to get stuck working with for a full day shoot? Um, this is actually something they consider when handing out assignments. Um, they will be looking through your website to get a sense of your personality so they can figure this out. Also, don't have a broken website. Make sure it works. It might seem silly, but really, test it out. Go through all the pages. Do it regularly. Uh, make sure it's working. Otherwise, you look sloppy and unprofessional. Um, and it's absolutely critical to remain professional. This includes proper spelling and grammar, returning phone calls and emails, and other little details. That, uh, that indicate that you're respectful of other people's time. Give your users a reason to contact you, um, a reason to let you know that they exist, you know, a reason to give you their email address so you can contact them again. Now, this can be following you on Twitter, friending you on Facebook, uh, signing up for an email newsletter, sending you a message, posting a comment on your blog, anything that makes it possible to open up a dialogue with them. And be consistent um, with your updates. There you go. And how you handle things, how you present things, um, etc. And yes, it matters how you interact with people. If you rip someone a new one on the comment area of your blog or you're blasting people on Twitter, you should expect a potential client to see this and be turned off. You know, instead, treat people with respect, keep a level head at all times and be active within your own website and your own social community. People really do notice this stuff. 
And finally, this goes to the concept of uh, conquering a niche. Don't be a generalist. You know, target a particular niche that you're really strong in, a segment or a type of client, but have a specialty. You should be known as, um, hey, you're a great blank photographer, not a generalist. Now, you and your personal brand, just want you to think about this um, because it has implications into absolutely everything that you do, from your website to your methods of communications to your quality of your images, you name it. But everything you do plus everything you say plus everything you create equals your personal brand. So don't let anything slip, you know, pay attention, be aware. Um, and, uh, and be mindful of this because that's what people interact with you. This is what they're experiencing and they're feeling. Okay. <sighs> we made it to the, <laughs> to the end of the presentation, which, by the way, uh, as we mentioned earlier, was being recorded. Um, the video will be available within a few days on the Mac on Campus website um, and uh, on the Photo Shelter student page. Uh, thanks for hanging in here with me. Uh, I just shared a ton of information and I feel the need to remind you that marketing is a constant test and learn process. And the tactics shared here today uh, can be t undertaken uh, one at a time. Every photographer needs to determine their own right mix based on how productive each marketing, ac each marketing activity actually is. So stay tuned or subscribe to our newsletter um, so that we can advise you on the timing of the next session, uh, which is all about finding inspiration. So until then, thanks for coming and have fun marketing. I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. I think there was some real valuable information. Again, I know there's a lot given out. Um, feel free to go back and check out the, the videos of the session on either, on either website. Uh, and if you have any questions, certainly feel free to reach me at billg at macgroupus.com. Again, that's billg at macgroupus.com.